from National 9 News, this is Nightline with Kim Watkins. Legal dilemma after female security guard shoots a robber dead. An emergency landing for a passenger jet in North Queensland. And Trevor wins big brother, a million and a fiancé. Good evening. A female security guard has been released from hospital but is still refusing to talk with police after shooting a would-be robber dead in the car park of a hotel in Sydney's southwest. The woman was attacked with a knuckle duster during the hold-up attempt and then fired one shot, hitting the armed man in the head. Bleeding from the head and heavily bandaged, the woman wandered around the hotel car park shortly after the shooting. The man she'd shot as he sat in this stolen Ford Falcon had already been rushed to hospital, but he died within an hour of his injury. She's obviously very upset. It started at about 11 this morning and it echoed around the neighbourhood. I was out in the backyard and I heard a woman scream, a real long scream and then a little short scream and then a bang. Staff in the Moorbank Hotel's bistro looked out the window. I just saw the guy coming and then the lady pulled over behind. In time to see the shooting. I see in the, in the hand already, bang, that's it. I thought there were two junkies fighting. It's believed the man was after the bag containing the hotel's weekend takings. The guard was on her own, carrying a lot of cash. Police are now trying to piece together the sequence of events to work out when the struggle was and if the security guard's life was in danger at the time of the shooting. If not, she could be charged with murder. She's considerably battered by the experience. At this stage, uh, on legal advice, she's declined to uh, be interviewed by police. Layla McKinnon reporting for Nightline. A New South Wales court today dismissed charges against a police officer over the shooting of a career criminal. In response to the ruling, the state's police commissioner will ask for a review of guidelines relating to the charging of police over on-the-job incidents. Sergeant Shane Cribb always maintained he shot career criminal Adam Walters reporting for Nightline. The family of a murdered Melbourne mother of three has called for an independent crime commission to be set up after revelations she was the victim of mistaken identity. Police continue to appeal for anyone who knows the identity of others involved to help solve the seven-year mystery. Peter Kiprianu left the Melbourne Magistrates Court in 1999 with a way... Darren Lunny for Nightline. A Jetstar Boeing 717 on a flight from Brisbane to Hamilton Island on the Barrier Reef was tonight diverted to Mackay after fumes were reported in the cabin. Emergency services at the airport were put on full alert but the plane landed without incident. An early report indicates the odour was caused by plastic melting around wiring on a telephone at the back of the plane. The end of the AFL season has come early for embattled Hawthorne coach Peter Schwab. He had indicated he'd be stepping down at the end of the competition, but departed today amid speculation he was pushed. The family club it might be, but Hawthorne is about as dysfunctional as it gets. Sack coach sitting alongside interim CEO sitting alongside interim coach. This afternoon's media conference putting to bed what had been a messy affair. I'm happy with the decision and as I said to Jace today that I think it's best for, um, for both of us. Schwab's killer blow was at the MCG last Saturday when his Hawks crumbled against the Kangaroos to the tune of 80 points. It was hard on the weekend to really get the energy and, and uh, passion that's, that's needed and I was, you know, must admit once you're like that that's not the required attitude at AFL footy. While acting Hawthorne boss Jason Dunstall stressed that it was Schwab's decision to step down, suspicion lingers. That hardly seemed the case when Schwab spoke to Nine News only hours earlier. You know, I've said fine, I'll keep coaching, but um, if they want to revisit at any stage, that's up to the Hawthorne. Throughout the day, Schwab carried out his normal duties, meeting the player group along with the rest of his coaching staff. There was no indication that later he'd be gathering the group again, this time to farewell them. But hopefully... You know that some of them over time will still still want to call me up and uh, just for a cup of coffee. Donald McDonald has been installed to guide the club through the next five matches. Hawthorne take on Melbourne at the MCG on Sunday and while the new coach will be in search of a first up win, the man he's replaced will embark on a journey of anonymity. After today, let's call it quits and uh, let's just hope 
it's all positive for Hawthorne from here on in. Tony Jones for Nightline. Patrick Johnson has lost his appeal over not being selected in the sprint events for the Athens Olympics. Johnson, who's the only Australian to break the 10 second barrier for the 100 metres, contested his omission at the Court of Arbitration for Sport in Sydney tonight. The decision means Johnson's only event in Greece will be the 100 metre relay. Prime Minister Howard strode through his 65th birthday today, insisting that voters are not concerned with their leader's age. But it was a moment Labor was not going to let slip quietly by. 65, the age when many Australians put their feet up. But for John Howard, it was business as usual. <laughs> Nigel Blunden reporting for Nightline. For any baby, life has challenges from day one. But for some babies, their birthday comes prematurely and they can face a battle to survive. But now, thanks to a world-first study by Australian scientists, problems can be identified much earlier. Both Sophie Carrasso's boys were premature, but it was Teo weighing just a kilo who battled to survive. Cheryl Taylor for Nightline. Australian television has notched its first million dollar winner as the moment of truth arrived in the Big Brother competition. It was down to Brie Amur from the Gold Coast and Fiji born Trevor Butler from Broken Hill. And the winner was. <coughs> Trevor! <laughs> and he had this surprise for his girlfriend. Brie, will you marry me? Yes. <laughs> his prize money is four times that of previous winners. Ahead on Nightline, the Olympic black hole that's costing taxpayers millions. And Lance Armstrong chalks up six and weighs up shooting for seven. <laughs> Sydney loved hosting the Olympics. It's just the sting in the tail that's proving a bit of a worry. The cost of keeping the venues in use is running at $46 million a year. The party may be well and truly over, but the memory lingers on. The government is fast turning the Olympic rings into Olympic sinkholes. Almost four years after that golden fortnight, taxpayers are still meeting an annual bill of $46 million to keep the Olympic venues from flatlining. So far, Telstra Stadium and the Sydney Superdome have cost us $6 million. The equestrian centre's subsidy is $1.3 million every year. $1.1 million goes to the shooting centre. The International Regatta Centre costs us $1.7 and the Blacktown Olympic Park sucks up $1.26 The government says subsidising sporting venues is a public duty and much more comes in than goes out. We wouldn't have been able to hold the Rugby World Cup last year if we didn't have the facilities. That brought in $300 million worth of economic benefit. On a somewhat smaller but just as important scale, there's another battle building up over funding for sporting facilities. The South Sydney Rabbitohs worried that the team will lose its century-old Redfern Oval home base unless the City Council agrees to a multi-million dollar upgrade. To tear it down and make it open parkland so that we weren't able to train here would be a tragedy. Peter Harvey for Nightline. An Australian drug smuggler has to wait another three to four weeks to learn if he's escaped the death penalty in Singapore. Taken to court in this prison bus today, land on the West Bank. Lance Armstrong is still celebrating his record-breaking sixth win in the Tour de France and is giving every indication he'll be back to defend his title. The American says that during this year's event, he rediscovered the joy of racing. Lance Armstrong, having conquered cancer a few years ago, is now conquering the record books and Paris. In Paris, Brett McLeod for Nightline. Now to finance and the National Australia Bank needs to move quickly if it wants to grab its long-term target, the UK bank Abbey National. With the details, here's Helen McCombie. The NAB has been interested in Abbey National for more than two years as part of its long-term growth strategy. Now Spain's huge Santander Bank has made a formal approach to buy Abbey and there are reported to be other international banks who are running the ruler over it. But the National Australia Bank is still reeling from its profit downgrade and rebuilding its damaged reputation and may be in no position to deal itself in. Meanwhile, the NAB will soon take possession of the home of one of South Australia's better known winemakers. Andrew Garrett has been ordered to surrender his $4 million home in Adelaide Hills to pay off debts he owes to NAB. The South Australian Supreme Court has given him 14 days to hand over possession.
With the bush still complaining about being left out of the broadband revolution, Telstra has announced that 99 towns are going to have broadband access for the first time. Telstra is rolling out ADSL services, the result of a $100 million incentive scheme to encourage services in the bush. And with the shortage of corporate news, the Australian share market went almost nowhere. The All Ordinaries Index virtually unchanged. The banks were winners, with the National Australia rising 23 cents. While resource stocks like Rio and BHP were in losing territory along with the main group. And that's the finance for today. Now to overseas markets in Tokyo closed down nearly 28 points. London is trading 25 points lower. Gold is fetching $391.95 US an ounce. And the Australian dollar is weaker against the greenback tonight, buying 71.11 US cents. It's also down against the yen and the pound, but up against the euro. Nightline sports news after the break, including an early 27th birthday present for Brett Rumford in Ireland. And Kimi Raikkonen crashes out at 300 k's an hour. <laughs> AFL skills coach Brad Hardy has earned no fans at the Western Bulldogs for labelling coach Peter Road too soft on his players. The club claims Hardy's been sacked from his part-time stint as a result of his comments, but Hardy disagrees. Brad Hardy labelled Bulldogs coach Peter Road too soft and said the players were in their comfort zone after Saturday night's loss to Collingwood. Julian Distook for Nightline. A couple of nagging issues continue to dog rugby league. Complaints over the performance of referees and players who feign injury to draw penalties. But league bosses claim it's too late in the season for any rule changes. This is the referee's bunker. Every Monday they pull apart their own and each other's work. Clinton Fletcher for Nightline. Australia's Brett Rumford is celebrating the biggest win of his career after taking out the Irish Open. He shot a final round 67 to finish four clear of the field. Fellow Australian Peter Lonard, who was the overnight leader, was third. After missing the cut in four of his past six tournaments, Paul Crawley for Nightline. Australia's women's basketball team is on its way to Athens. The Opals flew out this afternoon, aiming to go one better than the silver medal they won in Sydney. They're a great bunch of girls and we get along very well. And as long as we've got the gel within the team at the right time, I think we've got the talent and the team together to go all the way. The Opals are ranked number three in the world, with half the team making their Olympic debut. Next on Nightline, the national weather details. The national weather now and a cold front will push through Tasmania and approach the southeast. A high will move through South Australia. The forecasts fine in Darwin, early showers for Brisbane, mainly fine in Sydney and Canberra. The chance of late showers in Melbourne, showers developing in Hobart, possible showers in Adelaide, but a fine day ahead in Perth. A painting by late Aboriginal artist Rover Thomas was tonight passed in at $675,000, despite hopes it would become the first piece of Indigenous art to crack the million dollar mark. The painting Uluru was auctioned by Sotheby's in Melbourne. Thomas achieved the record for the highest price paid for Aboriginal art in 2001, when the National Gallery in Canberra bought another painting for more than $778,000. Negotiations over Uluru continue. And that's Nightline for this Monday. Our next news is in the Today Show at 6am. I'm Kim Watkins. Good night. <laughs>